Hey there, Pete Erickson here, the founder of Modev and the creator of the Voice and AI Conference coming up September 5th through 7th in Washington, D.C. This is part of our Meet the Speaker series, and I am thrilled uh, to bring up our next guest. She's someone I've known for some time. Uh, she's spoken at other uh, voice conferences in the past, and she, she speaks at conferences around the world. She really is uh, on the inside track when it comes to conversation design. And as we all know, it's a rapidly changing and emerging field in the wake of the arrival of large language models and generative AI. And here to talk about me, about it with me is the one and only Emily Banzoff with Willow Tree. Let me pull her up now. Emily, how Happy. are you? I'm doing well, thanks. How are you? I'm doing great. I failed to um, mention in my introduction that you are also a fabulous musician, and I had the very good fortune of playing with you for a moment at last year's event. Tell us a little bit before we get started here about your musical pursuits. Sure. So I actually started, I, I grew up playing music. I started when I was four um, playing violin and I went to school for it. And um, after that, I became a freelance musician and then I ended up switching to tech. <laughs> right. But <laughs> well, I think there's a really cool um, intersection between music and technology. Yes, absolutely. Um, especially with voice. <laughs> especially with voice. And then, yeah. you know, having been around developer communities now for 14 years, I can tell you that a lot of developers are and designers are musicians and play yes. in working bands or play professionally like yourself. Um, and, you know, you're very humble, but uh, you have played with, is it the Baltimore uh, Symphony? Baltimore Symphony, yes. Mm-hmm. And I think you even made an appearance on the Tonight Show. I did, the... yes. <laughs> Late Show with Stephen Colbert. <laughs> Late Show with Stephen Colbert. That's yeah. pretty amazing. I mean, come on, that's awesome. Well, yeah. I am not worthy. Oh. Um, <laughs> no. My my show last weekend got rained out. You know, my band. Oh, we, no. we, we warmed up. We played two uh, two you know sort of sound check songs, and um, we we're just getting ready to get started. And the heavens opened up, and the rain just came down. So <laughs> oh, it was a very short, very short show. But um, but anyway, well, it's great to see you, Emily. And now let's shift gears a little bit to uh, your professional life as a conversation designer. Take us back a little bit. Um, and how did you? come to, you know, first get involved with conversation design. Tell us a little bit about the role that you played there at the Willow Tree. Sure. So I've, I guess I came at it originally from a UX design perspective. So I took a boot camp program and then I started kind of getting to the writing side of things. So I took a bunch of courses in conversation design, UX writing. Um, and then I ended up meeting Heidi Culbertson, <laughs> who oh, was God. my mentor through one we of love these Heidi. programs. Hello, <laughs> yes. <Heidi. laughs> So she kind of brought me into the fold and started introducing me to people. And um, that's kind of how I started getting involved. And then I just kind of spiraled from there. I got involved with the Open Voice Network. I was hosting a, a podcast for a bit, co-hosting with two other people. And um, I was very involved with all of the events going on and just trying to get myself to learn as much as I can in the field. That's cool. Well, it's been a, you know, conversation design. It, I guess you could say, you know, in the, in the arrival of the, of the assistance, I think that really drove that industry, but still, a, you know, quite a niche industry. Yes. And now, you know, with the arrival of large language models and generative AI, I see it as a role that's really being thrust into the limelight because yes. everybody that's going to pursue, you know, a chat bot and plug it into a large language model at some point, they have to understand conversations, understand conversation design and do it well. Right, and exactly. And um, I think conversation designers are crucial for these types of roles because we know how to organize the information. We know how to connect with users and make the experience a good one for people. And integrating these large language models the right way is really, really important for the user experience. Right. I think that, you know, we, I mean, it, it, it is, it's almost even more important than a, than a, than a digital user interface. Um, because mm -hmm. if you have a bad experience with, you know, with something that you hear or some kind of chat interface, um, then yeah, you're less likely probably to come back and experience it again. You may not, you know, so yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting. You had posted today on LinkedIn uh, about the, you know, you, you'd ask people's opinions about, um, oh, hello puppy. You'd ask people's <laughs> opinions. It's great. We love our dogs and they yeah. now participate in our, in our, in our meetings and our podcast. So it's all good. We're yeah. very dog friendly here. 
Right. Oh, there she is. Maisie's, Maisie's oh. behind me in the corner. You can kind of wait, wait, where? There, yeah, there oh, she is. Oh, I can see her. Oh, yeah, she there is. she is. Yes. yes. So I think she hears your dog. Oh. Um, so, uh, by the way, what's your dog's name? His name's Archer. Archer. <laughs> He's a, a big 80 pound Labradoodle. He so sounds big. He <laughs> said he just has a big bark and he sounds very large. Well, hello, Archer. Um, you had posted about, you know, what's the, you know, um, you, you were seeing prompt engineering and we're seeing prompt design and kind of like, what's the difference? And it's got a really good dialogue going there. Oh, yeah. And, um, it's fascinating. <laughs> I love I love Kane Sims, who said that basically, if you're talking to a software engineer, it's prompt engineering. If you're talking to a designer, it's prompt design. <laughs> I thought it was kind of funny. But I will say that, you know, it goes a little bit further than that. I think that, you know, um, this, you know, now that there's an interface um, that everybody knows, you know, a prompt interface for if you're building images or you want to shoot out some text or build documents or write a movie, I don't care what you're trying to do. We're used to the fact now there's a prompt uh, field that we can put things into. But before, um, you know, ChatGPT and, and some of the other, you know, generators that we've been working with now kind of as consumers, prompting was something that, you know, was probably tied to an API, might have involved, you know, some code and putting in, you know, these prompts or, or dynamically generating prompts based on what somebody is saying or doing. So, um, you know, you could see that engineers are involved because there's code and it may be part of prompt engineering, but designers are actually, I think what you smartly said is creating the experience. And I think that's probably kind of where, where, where the, where the difference lies. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, to me personally, I like the term prompt design <laughs> just because it resonates more with what I do. Sure. But <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And look, yeah. there's a difference. I, I don't think software developers would, um, I, I think that they understand they, you know, very, you very sometimes rarely you find a, des, uh, you find a software engineer who's great at design. That's, right. you know, it's a little bit of a unicorn and you might find a designer who's great at code. Um, I am not one of those people. <laughs> right. So, you know, we all need each other. And, um, you know, and then I think there's even a, um, a difference between design and experience, um, mm -hmm. design and user experience. You know, um, uh, the user experience uh, part of this is also really critical. And it may be slightly different than design, a little bit like UI and UX. Uh, and I think that, you know, if you ask a UI designer during the kind of the grow up of the Web 2.0 world, and a UX designer, you know, a lot of people would get those, would just say those both together, UI, UX, mm -hmm. but they're actually two quite different things. Yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think we'll have to see kind of over how, over time, how it shifts and how the industry views it and how those roles kind of get integrated into a product team and how they work together, I guess, with others. Emily, you, you've got so much experience at this, and I would love for you to talk a little bit about some of the work that you've done that you can talk about publicly, some of the brands that you've you know, interfaced with, you know, Willow Tree is such a successful organization and working with some of the largest brands in the world, um, which is probably why the company was acquired last year for over a billion dollars, mm. a very impressive exit in our field. <laughs> um, a lot of exits get a lot of attention, but this was, I mean, what a, what a great success story. But tell us about some of the things you've been working on. So we've done a couple things um, in a couple different industries. Um, Right now, my current project, um, I'm working on stuff in healthcare at the moment. Um, we've also got uh, some work in financial services where voice is a, a very good use case for that. Um, and then we've also, oh, interestingly I enough, <laughs> we had, um, I, I got to consult on a project for uh, vet, vet techs, or I guess vet health or pet health. <laughs> so that was, that was really cool uh, to see how voice could be integrated into those types of experiences. I guess that goes along with healthcare, just care in general. Hey, anything involving pets. You know, that, <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. Well, you know what I just did in real time is I edited your card because I realized we didn't have your title and, and company. Oh, so, okay, cool. so I hope everyone can appreciate that. To pay no, to pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Um, and you got to love StreamYard because they make it easy and yeah. I'm not paid by them to say that, but, uh, <laughs> but definitely do. So um, um, another project yeah. I can talk about is what I was working on uh, in my job before Willow Tree, I was a conversation designer with strategic education. So I was working with the student service chatbots there. So um, I've, I've really been able to work with a variety of different products. Um, Tell us a little bit really more cool. about that. So student service chatbots, I guess I can assume that there's, you know, 
web interface and students are asking questions and yes uh -huh. so they're basically finding out their financial aid information and i was able to put together a flow to help them fill out their fafsa and um, other financial uh support that they that they needed to have that's very um, cool yeah and we also worked on a marketing bot for that so it was it was a very there was a lot of variety in it which was really cool <laughs> i won't disclose the year i was in college but basically we had to go to main hall which was what it was called um and um you know get, find all that information <laughs> it was, yeah <laughs> it was uh yeah it was quite those were the days um yeah, I would just share that the computer lab that I worked in in college, you know, basically we were learning COBOL and Fortran. So, you know, oh. I gave myself <laughs> a little Pascal too. Um, so, um, well, very cool. I think that, um, you know, we're just at such a fascinating time, right? We, you know, the arrival of all the foundational large language models. Have you had a time to work with any of them yet or look at any of the APIs? Um, I've been able to play around a lot with voice flow, um, which has been really fun. Uh, mm. I did their hackathon recently. Nice. Um, and we also did a hackathon at Willow Tree, uh, where we were able to kind of play around with some of the different AI tools mm. and just figure out how we could help clients use them. <laughs> and right. Oh, that's them great. Their... That's yeah. great. Well, we love voice flow. Um, <laughs> they are another partner for, uh, for voice and AI this year. We're very excited to, to have them and, uh, just a little plug for them. They're going to be putting on a little post, uh, prompt night event uh, on Wednesday, uh, September 6th. So stay tuned for that. Um, and I don't think you know much about prompt night either. I haven't really shared it uh, far and wide yet, but it's an event we're planning on uh, Wednesday, September 6th from 6 to 9 p.m. And it'll be a meetup where people can come from outside the conference, but it's an opportunity for everybody to sort of experience, you know, the, this, I, I think this intersection of conversational and generative AI. We're going to do that in a number of different ways with, a lot of talks. There's actually going to be quite a bit of content that evening. We're going to do a prompt competition. Um, we're working <laughs> on that. Like so yeah, <laughs> it's going to be fun. It'll be a it, look. It's going to be a party, but it's going to be a celebration. We're also going to bring in lots of startups uh, that are you know want to get their name out there and come to the event and have a cocktail table with a laptop and just meet people. So we're excited about really excited about that event, and um, we're thrilled that you know Willow Tree is a part of the conference this year as well. You you worked for you got lucky and they got lucky. Um, I think it's been, it's been quite a story of what they've been able to do. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about what you're going to be talking about at voice. I did pull it up here. So let me, um, let me go back to that. Um, you are speaking Wednesday, September 6th from two to two thirty ish range, uh, from words to impact best practices for prompt engineering. And you're going to be speaking with, uh, Marlinda Galapon from, uh, uh, a conversation designer at Zendesk. Tell yes. us a little bit more about what you and, and Marlinda are going to be talking about. So we actually have a third person that's going to be joining us as well. <laughs> I think she oh. Who's, so it's who's gonna joining be you? Jenny Miro from Comcast. <laughs> oh my God, that's great. So, awesome. um, yes, we're super, we're all super excited and we're just going to be sharing um, best practices about how to write prompts and get the output that you're looking for, um, for, for an experience. And well, uh, we'll be using examples from bots that we've built ourselves um, or whatever we can share of the work that we've done for, <laughs> for other right. companies. But that's right. Yeah, it'll, it'll well, be a I'll lot Well, I'll tell you what, that's so valuable right now. And you, you think yeah. about Comcast, Zendesk, and the, the clients that Willow Tree works with are the largest organizations, some of the largest organizations in the world. Um, so I think that is an awesome opportunity for people at the conference to get a real inside look at uh, conversation design and an opportunity to, to further understand this intersection between generative AI and conversation design, which, which is where we've sort of positioned the conference this year is because that's, I can't think that the era that we're in right now. I think that's the right way to go. <laughs> I think yeah. it's going to be so important. <laughs> yeah. Forward. Well, you know, yeah, we're really looking forward to it. Um, well, let me see, before we wrap up here, just maybe a couple questions. So what are some myths that you think are in the industry about uh, maybe about voice or conversation design? You know, let's bust a myth or two here. Anything come to your mind that maybe people don't quite uh, understand or get right? I think um, a lot of it is just people not knowing how to use it properly. <laughs> right. And just getting that education side of things. Um, 
and just being able to show them through the design. I think that a lot of that is missing from voice experiences right now. At Will Tree, we talk a lot about multimodal voice. Right. Um, and just being able to get that right because, and, and aside from the voice, like being able to integrate all those other modalities to create a comprehensive experience. I think that's great. I think it's very cool. I, um, yeah, I think that there is maybe an oversimplification when it comes to uh, thinking about conversation design, almost an afterthought. Mm -hmm. And look, this follows other trends. I think in mobile, um, user experience and design weren't really thought through in the early mobile applications. And we look back, I mean, we would just be aghast, I think, if we could see what the interface or what the mobile app looked like on some of, you know, even the best brands in the world. And, and then think people quickly understood how important design and user experience was to, you know, to the overall application. I think we're on a similar journey uh, with voice and conversation design, and it's just only going to grow in importance. Um, well, what are you, you know, what are you most excited about? I think in terms of like where the industry is going, what, what, what excites you as a conversation designer? Well, I think it's really cool to be able to stay on the forefront of the new technologies that are coming out and being able to integrate the technologies efficiently into our workflows and figuring out how, how to do that effectively. Um, so we can create the best experiences and save time for ourselves too. <laughs> hey, staying at the forefront. That's what we're excited about as well. It's why I love doing what I do. Um, mm -hmm. Just being able to just meet people from like you from around the world that are really pushing the envelope on technology and, and where we are in AI. Certainly it's, it's taking up all the oxygen right now in so yes. many different ways. And <laughs> A lot of important conversations going on right now. And, you know, I think that the Screen Actors Guild has, you know, a big strike right now because we're, you know, fighting for copyright protections mm -hmm. for actors. I mean, there's just so many parts of this conversation and there's legislation in Europe and Asia and, and the United States and some right. of it's local and federal. And it's just, it's an exciting time though, because there's a lot of promise on the technology as well to do some really, really good things. And that's what I'm excited for. And I'm excited to meet the people from around the world. So regardless of where you are, um, you should check out voiceand.ai. Again, the event is September 5th through 7th in Washington, D.C. And you get a chance to meet uh, conversation designers like Emily and her co-presenters uh, with Zendesk, Zendesk and Comcast. And we're going to have companies from all over the world talking about what they're doing right now and actually how they're implementing uh, conversational and generative AI, whether it's an automotive company, a bank, a retailer, the largest retailers in the world. Um, this is your opportunity to meet the folks that are putting AI into action. I'm really excited for the event and I hope you'll join us there. Emily, it's been an awesome speaking with you today and uh, we look really forward to seeing you in September. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Hang on. I'm going to sign us out. All right. So this has been Pete Erickson talking to Emily Banzoff. I really enjoy these conversations. It's great to meet our speakers, find out a little bit more about them. She has a large dog and she is a professional violinist and like really, really good. You can trust me on this one. So anyway, great chatting with you, her today and uh, hope to see you at the conference. Check it out again at voiceand.ai.